I've been adding all kinds of fun and useful automations to my smart workshop, but the more I add, the more potential points of failure pop up. One thing I was particularly worried about was accidentally shutting down my 3D printers mid-print. So I created an automation that would prevent that, and it's made the whole workshop even more convenient to use. So today I'll show you how it works and how you can get it set up for yourself. So let's take a look. For years, I've had all of my 3D printers plugged in via smart plugs. I actually published a video talking about the early advantages of doing this over eight years ago. Having them plugged in via smart plugs means I can power on and off my printers remotely even when I'm not in my workshop. This allows me to save energy on idle power draw when they're not in use, whilst being able to turn them on if I decided that I want to print something whilst I'm out. Then, if something was to go catastrophically wrong mid-print whilst I'm away, and the mobile printer app for some reason wasn't responding, I'd be able to power them down and minimise damage. As most modern printers have pretty good mobile apps allowing you to control them remotely, I mainly use smart plugs with them for two reasons. One, to have them powered off when not in use, both saving slightly on energy consumption and keeping them quieter, as some of them have fans that run to keep the electronics cool even when they're not printing, and also to monitor the overall power consumption of the printers when they are in use. As I showed in my recent video giving an overview of my smart workshop, I have all of this running through Home Assistant. For those that aren't familiar, Home Assistant is basically an open source smart home management software usually run on something like a Raspberry Pi. That can then connect to pretty much all smart home devices and gives you unparalleled control over how your smart home runs. If you're interested in getting started with Home Assistant, I published some tutorials on getting Home Assistant set up for 3D printing last year, which I'll link to in the description. I have an old iPad mini set up as a Home Assistant dashboard display next to my computer. It normally sits there with the screen off, but turns the screen on anytime I'm near it, triggered by my Acara presence sensor, which can not just detect that there is someone in the room, but where in the room they are. It automatically displays my workshop dashboard, allowing me to turn on and off my printers, various lights, and also gives me readings for the temperature and other air quality metrics in the room. So with my printers plugged in via smart plugs, I can turn them each on and off via the Home Assistant display, with my voice if I was to utter the forbidden trigger word, via Home Assistant on my computer, or via one of several mobile apps. But in addition to that, I also added physical buttons beneath the desk in front of each printer to make it quick and convenient to turn them on and off while standing next to them. These are wireless mini switches from Acara. They're reliable, pretty cheap, and depending on their use case, they can last years before you need to change the batteries. They can be connected to the Acara app and then used in the Acara ecosystem, but they run on Zigbee, so providing you have a Zigbee antenna connected to your Home Assistant, you can connect them directly to that. So when I press this button, Home Assistant sees that it's been pressed, then turns on or off the associated smart plug. Whilst these switches do come with 3M stickers on the back, I've mounted these under the desk with a simple holder I designed which I'll link to in the description. I actually use these buttons quite a bit, so I've also designed mounts for this on the Scadis pegboards, and I use it for my light switch, so I've designed a cover for UK light switches. This is great, and just makes it so much easier being able to just tap one of these buttons if I'm already over by the printer. But I was worried that if I was accessing something from the storage underneath the desk, that I'd accidentally knock one of these buttons and power down the printer whilst it's mid-print. So I put together a solution which prevents me from accidentally powering down my printer whilst it's actively printing, but still allows me to force a shutdown in an emergency. These smart plugs from Shelly connect to Home Assistant via an integration, and they feature power monitoring, allowing you to see and track how much power is being consumed by the device which is connected to it. This can be really useful for gauging the energy costs of a print job, but if your smart plug passes on this power monitoring information to Home Assistant, like with these Shelly plugs, you can do a lot more with it. So with that in mind, here is my solution in short. If the button is pressed and the smart plug is off, it will turn it on. If the button is pressed and the plug is on, it will check what the current power draw is of the connected device. If that's below a set threshold, it will turn the plug off. But if it's over that threshold, suggesting the printer is actively doing something, it won't. There is a bit more functionality to it, which we'll look at in a minute, but that's the general idea in a nutshell. 
Now, instead of using the smart plug power monitoring to figure out if the printer is in use, if your 3D printer is directly connected to Home Assistant, as with the Bamboo Lab Home Assistant integration tutorial, which I posted a while back, you could just have Home Assistant check directly if your printer is actively in use. If you'd prefer to do that, you can just swap that condition over in the automation we're about to go through and the rest will be the same. But this method with the smart plug power monitoring will work with any 3D printer. Okay, let's take a look at what you're going to need to make this work. You'll obviously need Home Assistant running on something like a Raspberry Pi. You'll need a Zigbee antenna connected to your Home Assistant device. You'll need a smart plug that has power monitoring can connect to Home Assistant either directly or via an integration and will pass the power monitoring information to Home Assistant. And you'll require a Home Assistant connected button like the Acara wireless mini switch I have here. I'll put links to the devices that I use for each of these in the video description. Let's take a closer look at how this works so you can do it yourself. Please note that this does presume you already have Home Assistant set up and running and you have your chosen devices already connected and integrated with Home Assistant. If you need help getting set up with Home Assistant, I've linked to my Home Assistant beginners tutorial in the description. Once you're ready, let's get stuck in. As I just mentioned, we're assuming here that you've already got your smart switch and smart plug connected with Home Assistant. This process will vary depending on which devices you have, but the Shelly plugs that we've got here can connect just via the Shelly integration, and the Acara buttons can be connected via the Zigbee 2 MQTT add-on. I don't currently have a tutorial on this, but there are some great ones online already. Before we get stuck in, you want to note down two numbers. On Home Assistant or in the Smart Plug app, find the page that shows the current power draw of the plug. Note down what the power draw is when your printer is turned on but is idle, and then start a print. The printer will spike once it starts actively printing, then it'll settle back down again. Note what this number is as well. Before we get making yours, let's just go through one that I've already made so you can see how it's going to work together. I have an automation that runs if my Acara button is pressed. If my smart plug is off when the button is pressed, it turns the smart plug on. If the smart plug is on when the button is pressed, it checks to see what the current power draw is of the device connected to the smart plug. If that power is over a certain threshold, suggesting that the printer is in use, it will get my Google Nest speaker to tell me that the printer is in use and turns a helper I've created on for 10 seconds, then turns it off again. If the power draw was under that threshold, it just turns the plug off again. I then have a second automation that is triggered if I long press the Acara switch. If triggered, it checks if the helper that the other automation turned on for 10 seconds is on, and if it is, it turns off the smart plug and turns off the helper. So what this effectively means is, if I press the button and the plug is off, it will turn on. If I press the button and the plug is on, but the printer is not in use, it will turn off. If I press the button and the plug is on and the printer is in use, it won't turn off, but it will notify me that the printer is in use, at which point I then have 10 seconds to long press that button to force shut down. Okay, so let's go through how to get this set up for you. We're going to require two automations and one helper for each printer you're setting up. Let's get started with creating the helper. In Home Assistant, go to Settings, Devices and Services, then select Helpers at the top. If you're not familiar with them, there are several different types of helpers, but the ones we'll be using here are basically virtual switches or states. You can use them as cross-automation variables. Click Create Helper down at the bottom. Now scroll down and find Toggle, or just type Toggle in the search bar. You need to give it a name, and we're making this one for the X1C, so let's call it X1C Power Off Check. If you have a lot of helpers, give it an icon to help identify it. For this, I use a printer nozzle, then click Create. It should then be added to your list of helpers. If you then hit the three dots to the right of it and select Edit Category, you can add it to a category specific for printer helpers, and that'll help keep your helper list neat and accessible. Now if you click on your helper, you'll see that it's literally just a toggle switch that you can turn on and off. You'll want to leave this as off and you can just click out of it. Now onto the automations. 
go to Settings, Automations and Scenes, then click Create Automation in the bottom right. For the When, you want to add a trigger, which is when your button is pressed. So click Add Trigger and select Device. And so for me here, I'll select the button which I've set up for this, the X1C power switch, and then select the trigger mode as Single Action. These buttons allow you to have different actions assigned depending on a single click, double click or long press. Continuing on with the automation, we'll skip over the and if section and jump straight to the then do. Click add action and then type if, then select if then. Under the if section, click add condition, select device and then find your smart plug. Set the condition of the smart plug to is off and then leave the duration blank. Back to our conditional in the then do, go to then and click add action. Again, select device and then select the smart plug. This time set the action to turn on. So far we've basically said if you click your button and the plug is off, turn it on. Now in the else section, this is what will happen if you click the button but the smart plug was already on. For this, click Add Action and add another if then conditional. Under the new if, add a condition, select device and then select your smart plug. Under condition, select current power. The exact wording may vary depending on your brand and model of smart plug but basically you want whatever it refers to the current power draw of your smart plug. For above, enter the number that you recorded earlier for your printer being idle with a slight safety buffer added to it. For this X1C it was 30, so I've set it to 40. It's entirely up to you what you set this to. If I set this to 40 it would prevent an accidental power off, even if the printer wasn't printing but the nozzle cooler fan is still running after a print, which can prevent issues of heat creep but I could set this to maybe 60 or 70, which would then only prevent power off during an active print. We'll leave this for 40 for now though. Under the then section of our nested conditional, we need to enter four separate actions. Firstly, I've set my Google Nest speaker to talk to me and tell me that the printer is in use and that I should long press to turn it off. The X1C is in use, long press to power off. You don't need to do this, but I would suggest that you add some sort of notification so if the printer isn't powering off and you've forgotten about this automation that it reminds you, you could just set Home Assistant to push a notification to your phone. Next, add a perform action, search for input boolean, select turn on helper, then search for your helper that you created a minute ago. Now add a third action to the then section search for delay and select wait for time to pass. Set this to 10 seconds or however long you would like your window to be to force shut down your printer again. Then set another perform action, search for input boolean but this time selecting turn off helper and selecting your helper. Finally under else in this nested conditional add an action, select device, select your plug and then set to turn off. Now we can save this automation. I'll save it as X1C power button Akara. I include the Akara bit just so in the future I know that this is the automation for the button, not something running just within Home Assistant or on a Home Assistant dashboard for example. Finally we need to create one more automation. So go back to automations and scenes, select create automations and create new automation. Under when Add a trigger, select device and select your button. Under trigger select hold which is long press if available or whatever action you'd like to use as your force shutdown command. Under and if select entity then state. Under entity select the helper that you made earlier then under state select on. Now under then do create an action, select device and your smart plug then set it to turn off. And finally add another then do action. This time select perform action, turn off helper by searching for input boolean and selecting choose entity. Choose the helper that you selected earlier and have it turn that off. And that's it, we are up and running.
We've just set this up for a physical button, but you could take that same automation, apply it as a script in Home Assistant, and then have other things like a button on a Home Assistant dashboard run it, which would then run through that same safety protocol that we've just set up. Now it's important to note, this will only prevent accidental power downs running through Home Assistant. If you've got your smart plug connected to a Google or it's not going to prevent them from powering down your printer. Equally, it's not going to prevent it via the smart plug manufacturer's app or via pressing the button on the plug itself. So with that in mind, take care which services you connect your printer's smart plugs to. On a positive note, I mentioned earlier that this method using the smart plugs power monitoring will work with any brand of 3D printer, but it's better than that. This method will prevent accidental shutting down of literally any device connected to that smart plug whilst it's in use, providing that device uses more power whilst in use than when it's idle, which is pretty much all devices. Remember, I've added links to all of the hardware that I use for this in the video description. I hope this was useful and it helps prevent accidents in your increasingly smart home. If you have found this useful and you've enjoyed it, please do pop me a like, and if you've got access to it yet, hit that hype button. It is always really appreciated. I'll be releasing a video soon on how to set up and automate an old iPad as a home assistant display like I have very soon. And of course, I've got loads of 3D printing and maker tech tutorials, reviews, and deep dives on the way, so subscribe so you don't miss them. I'm also excited to announce that I've released a new range of 3D printing, engineering, and maker-themed t-shirts and hoodies on 3drevolutionstore.com, so make sure you check them out. And remember, channel members get a perpetual discount on that store. So, as always, thanks very much for watching everyone, and until next time, happy printing. A huge thank you to my revolutionaries, my channel members. Remember, if you'd like to join them, supporting me and my channel, and getting yourself bonus goodies like early access to my videos and a store discount, hit join beneath any of my videos. For now, why not chuck on one of my other videos to learn something new or have some fun. Thanks very much everyone, and until next time, happy printing.